Hey everyone, so this is finally the second part of that laser phaser tutorial. Um, I actually had one done you know, a few weeks ago and uploaded it, but um, I didn't release it because I just wasn't happy with it. And I also had some you know, audio problems, but uh, the way I approached it was more like the more advanced uh, stuff, you know, like with using script and automatically having the length adjust to the you know, moving object, parenting an object, and I thought to myself, well, I could start off with parenting, but probably do you know do this as easy as possible. So for you out there who are going, oh, you know, I know way better methods to uh, to you know do space battles. I'm, I just thought I'd approach it a different way because you know my goal is to make it as easy as possible for people who are just starting out with Lightwave. And um, so what I'm doing now, I'm going to start off with actually parenting a, a phaser laser object uh, to a ship or you know anything else, and then. Uh, just go from there and, and show basically what I do in my scenes but probably from a different angle and uh, you know down the production line that I've got written down um, I'm going to show you know a more advanced uh, stuff to do with lasers and phasers and probably even using some particles to get some of those disruptors going as well but um, right now I just wanted to make it as simple as possible so uh, let's get going Okay, I just quickly loaded up a uh, Akira class starship, uh, which comes with a nice uh, setup scene, and uh, I thought I'd just use that to demonstrate the uh, how I would apply phaser effects. And um, so this is a, a quick uh, high-res preview that I've just uh, just done, 720p, and then this is the phaser that I've actually uh, applied. This is the actual scene setup. We're at frame uh, zero, and then the next thing we've got to do is actually load up the object. What you got to do normally is uh, parent that actual phaser to the ship's hull so that when you pan around with a camera or have high highly packed action scenes that uh, you know it looks like the phaser's coming from the, from the ship's hull you never know in a production at some t some point you might decide oh you've got to have another end of that scene but you know change the camera angle change the uh, the rotation or reposition the camera completely and then you're suddenly going to run into uh, into problems so uh, that's why I always want to make sure that my stuff is actually you know it's it's coming from where people would expect it to come from so in this case the phaser firing from the uh, phaser array or phaser banks so uh, change to perspective view make sure you've got the phaser selected and then with this rotation tool, we'll uh, move move our camera. So yeah, you can see I've um, basically got the phaser connected to the bank here. Um, so what I did when I loaded it up, I went to the setup tab, go into motion options, and then make sure that the actual phaser is parented or connected to the Akira class starship. And then if you go to modify, you use the move tool and uh, just position the phaser wherever you want it to come from. And uh, I normally use the perspective mode to do that, so you don't need to use the real camera. And then uh, have a quick look. So basically, get as close as you can. Um, just a quick tip here: don't go too closely into the ship's hull with a phaser object because there can be uh, rendering problems later on. Um, you're going to have rendering errors. Some renders might not even uh, work correctly. You know, you're going to have blobs or something like that, or Lightwave is going to complain. And uh, I've had it sometimes that, um, well, it looks like the whole ship's been inverted. You know, just really random, strange stuff. So uh, what I normally do is uh, just make sure that the actual phaser is not too close to the hull, but close enough that people know from a certain distance that you know that's where the, uh, the object is coming from. So uh, just um, to uh, to get rid of any sort of uh, imperfections or again trying to you know cheat in a way of making it look like the phase actually coming from from the hull but in this case it is slightly up in the air um, what what I normally do and I think that's what everyone else does in TV these days as well is uh, you put down a light there a point light and have that actually be the uh, charge you know or a, a source of where the phase is coming from okay so now that the phase is actually connected to the ship what we can now do is uh, you know, move the ship here, and as you can see, the phase is moving, which is what it what should happen, because we're you know we're telling it to rotate and therefore make the phaser look like it's actually moving. Um, now, in this case, <laughs> the ship's moving slightly uh, side sideways, so it looks like the phaser's moving too, but in actual fact, it's not. Uh, but again, you you can uh, change it. So at frame zero, we've got the phaser here, but we can say um, I don't know after. 50 frames so that would be like two seconds you want to have the phaser turning quickly or go backwards say your opponent is uh, on the opposite side or foe so just make the phaser turn like that um 
Let me just see if I can demonstrate that quickly. So again, it, it, it still doesn't look like much, but you can see how the phaser is turning. Now, the whole reason in the, the previous tutorial of creating the phaser the way we did it is to make sure that the phaser actually looks like it should when it's too close to the camera like it is here. Uh, in professional TV these days, they often have problems, and I've seen other people having the same problems, when they create a phaser, uh, sort of like the, the standard way of doing it. You know, there are so, so, so many tutorials out there on the internet that show you how to do this, and you always have the same problem. When the phaser's too close to the camera, you suddenly have that vanishing effect, or you only see half of the phase, or it completely vanish vanishes. I mean, some people say that even the color degrades if it gets too close to the camera. So our way of creating a phaser will still make it look fantastic, even though it's very close to the camera. And as you can see, it looks very, very good. So I'm quite pleased with this. And uh, this is how I would, you know, apply my phaser effect. Um, you know, once my website is up, up and running again, and that still might be a while, I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to make all these scenes all these scene files available for download so if you if you can't follow or you're having trouble you know you can get them there but uh, i'll let you know when that happens right now as of today april 20 28th 2010 my website is still not up yet so um let's have a look it's still going to be a few weeks at least um so I hope that this was enjoyable. I mean, it's, it, was a, a, um, it was a short tutorial. Uh, it's just because I haven't released anything for a while. And the previous tutorials that I had created regarding this topic, well, they uh, I always had problems with them, you know, physically. They're just uploading and YouTube wouldn't accept them. And so uh, you can play around with this and see what your own results are. So uh, until then, take care.